In this video, I'm showing you how to set a baseline in Microsoft Project so you can track your project's progress as your team completes their work. If you'd like to master how to use Microsoft Project and go from beginner to pro, then you can download my free cheat sheet at alvinthepm.com forward slash project guide. We're dividing this video into three parts. First, what is a baseline? Second, how to set up your baseline in Microsoft Project. And third, analyzing your schedule and your cost baselines for your project. If we're meeting for the first time, my name's Alvin and I'm an engineering project manager and it's really nice to meet you. On this channel, I help you start and grow your career in project management and I also show you some of the easiest ways to use Microsoft Project and other software that you'll be using. As we get into this video, join me in the comment section below. What's one area that you're having trouble with learning in Microsoft Project? I'm here to serve you. So if there's anything you wanna learn, let me know about it in the comment section below because I'd love to genuinely hear from you. Now, before we do anything, let's talk about what it means to set a baseline. A project baseline is your starting point for your project's plan. So you use it as a baseline to compare your project's performance over time. It's kind of like how you go on a fitness journey to lose 10 pounds by the end of the year. On day one, you use a scale to measure how much you weigh. That initial weight on day one is your baseline. So you can see how much progress you're making over the next few weeks. So going back to our topic, when you finish planning your project with your team and you're about to go into the execution phase of your project, that's when you first establish your project's baseline. Let me repeat it one more time because I get asked this question very frequently. That is the very first time you baseline your project. As you start to monitor your project's progress and your team's work and the tasks get delayed by more than 30 days, for example, then you need to submit a change request, obtain management approval, update the schedule, and then re-baseline your project plan accordingly. In most projects, you usually set your project's baseline with your schedule baseline and your cost baseline, and I'll show you how to do both of them in this video. So on the screen here, I'm showing my example project for building a do-it-yourself doghouse. It's divided among these phases for initiation, design, material preparation, construction, testing of the house, and final finishing. I just finished planning my project and I wanna set a project's baseline for tracking purposes. It's worth mentioning that I am inside of the tracking Gantt sheet mode and the table that's being displayed here is entry mode. To make yours match what I have, move your mouse horizontal to the left panel. Right click it and then choose tracking Gantt. Then move your mouse to the top left most cell until it highlights a box right click it and then choose entry. Before we make any changes, I want you to know a few things. On the Gantt chart on my right hand side, we see the red bars and they represent our critical path. Move your mouse to the top left most cell, right click and change your table to variance. You'll notice that the two columns on the right for baseline start and baseline finish show NA because we haven't created our baseline yet. After we establish our baselines, these two columns will populate with their project start and finish dates. Let's switch tables again by going to the top left most cell, right clicking it and switching from variance and choosing cost. We see here that the column for the cost baseline shows $0 because the baseline hasn't been created yet. After we establish our baseline, this entire column should update accordingly. Let's switch back to variance table for now. So let's talk about how to set your project's baseline. You only wanna do this after you've planned your project with the tasks, the durations, the resources, and all your costs have already been logged in. To set your baseline, go to the project tab, move your mouse to the schedule panel, and left click the button that says set baseline. 
From the drop down menu that appears, select the option for set baseline. When you do that, you're going to see a new pop up window that shows the following. The first field is where you can set the baseline for up to 10 different versions. If this is your very first baseline that you're creating, then choose the one that says baseline. Like it means this is your primary baseline that's kicked off after you plan your project for the very first time with your team. If it's your second or even your third time re-baselining a project, then choose the one for baseline one or baseline two and so on and so forth, depending on where you are with your project. My advice to you is stick to what works best for you so you know which baseline is from which date. I even recommend keeping a separate table of baseline dates and the change requests that you submit. That way it's clear to you which baseline corresponds to which change request anytime you need to update your project's schedule. In the second part of the window, there's an option for choosing how much the baseline should be applied for, your entire project or selected tasks only. For our example, let's leave it as entire project. And after you do that, move your mouse to the bottom and left click OK. Immediately, you're going to see the columns for baseline start and baseline finish dates automatically populate with your project's planned start and planned finish dates. Please keep in mind that you will only see this information when you're in the mode for variances table. By the way, don't forget to smash that like button if you're getting value out of this video and also to show me your support. So for our scheduled baseline, on our Gantt chart to the right, we see that almost everything looks the same except for one thing. We see a dark black grayish bar underneath each of the bars. And that's because this is our scheduled baseline that we can now use to see when a task is taking a shorter or a longer time to complete. Everything perfectly aligns with each of the bars because no changes have been made to the schedule. If there's any variation from this initial primary baseline, you're going to see it reflected on your GAN chart as your red or your blue task bars get longer or shorter as your project continues over time. If we look at our variance table on the screen, let's say that the task for project planning takes longer than three days to complete. Then we'll see this delay reflected in the column for finish variation. And subsequently, we'll see that the start variation for the next successor task will also get delayed. Now, let me show you the project's cost baseline. To do that, move your mouse to the top leftmost cell, right click it, and choose the option for cost. Your screen should look like what I'm showing on the screen right here. In the middle of your screen, you'll notice that you have a total cost column, and then you have a column for baseline. All the values for baseline have been updated to match all the values from your total cost column. For example, for the task of draft design, we have a plan total cost of $600. And the baseline cost for this task has been updated to be $600. Similarly, the two tasks below it for expert design review and finalized design have cost baselines of $600 each, which matches what our planned total costs are. So as our project progresses and we start to have changes in our costs, we'll see these variations against our initial planned cost baseline. So as you can see, it's very important to establish your project's baseline so you can track your project schedule and your cost variance as your project moves forward. That way, you can keep track of any scheduled delays or cost overruns as you monitor and control your team's work. Now, what's even more important is mastering the basics with how to use Microsoft Project. Please watch this video next to learn everything you need to use Microsoft Project, and I'll see you in the next video.